Put your hands together for Peter Liu, everybody. Hello, Bradley Theater. Oh, this is so nice. This is nice. Guys, we ready for some more comedy people? All right, just the bottom floor, that's fine. That's good, guys. I, I came in from Boston today. Um, Thank you, yeah, I, uh, I'm from Boston, I know it's hard to tell, because you know I don't talk with a speech impediment. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, uh, I've been in Boston for about a decade now, but uh, originally I was, uh, I was born in China, guys, so I was born, you know, pristine, pollution-free, and politically non-corrupt China. <laughs> I have to say that, they're listening. with weather balloons, apparently. Yeah. You guys got that? Yeah. yeah. They like shot, shot it down after like a whole week and then dudes were celebrating. That's hilarious. <laughs> that would be like if you came home to your wife fucking another man and before you shot him, you're like, oh no, no, please, finish. Thank you, thank you. You guys are a fun crowd. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I was born in China, but then when I was eight, I actually ended up moving to uh, Australia, because, you know, my parents wanted to experience racism. <laughs> I was, uh, I was nervous about moving to Australia, because, you know, I didn't speak any English, but then I got there, and I was like, oh, neither do they. They put me in, a, in an ESL class, that's a English as a second language, right? That's where to help you learn English faster, instead of putting you in the regular class, they put you in a class where no one speaks English. <laughs> Just me and a bunch of foreign kids, they're like, English, figure it out. It was like me, an Indian guy, dude from Pakistan, guy from Hong Kong, and uh, a dude from Philly who actually spoke English. <laughs> just not with the right accent. He was like, hello. And they're like, it's pronounced g'day. <laughs> um, yeah. From, um, from Australia, I ended up moving to uh, New Zealand, and then from New Zealand to here. Uh, oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, and when people find out that I, you know, move around a lot as a kid, they're just like, oh, was your family in the military? I'm like, no, they were indecisive. Every time I travel, the, uh, the TSA, they always think I'm in the military. Uh, I don't know what it is, you know? I don't know if it's my haircut, my demeanor, or my affinity for Asian prostitutes. <laughs> <laughs> Two tours in Thailand. <laughs> Thank you. No PTSD, just a couple STDs, you know? It's no need to thank me for my service. I was honorably discharged. It's a come joke, you get it, okay. We'll move on. Yeah, I, um, I did not grow up in a military family, but I was drafted into a terrible conflict. Uh, my parents' marriage. Growing up, uh, my parents, they like to argue by pointing out all the negative traits that the other one has passed on to me. <laughs> like, my dad will be like, uh, your ingrown toenails are the reason why your son can't walk straight. <laughs> Someone feels it right there, okay. And then my mom would be like, uh, he can't walk straight because you gave him astigmatism and he can't see for shit. <laughs> like, each of these insults is designed to hurt the other person, but every insult hurts me. <laughs> yeah, growing up my mom, she would always be like, oh, you're, you're just like your father. 
And I'll be like, uh, you pick him. <laughs> but all right, mom, if I'm like dad, does that mean my sister is like you? And she'd be like, no, your sister is like your dad's mom. <laughs> I'm like, all right, so you pass zero genetic information to either of your kids then. And then she was like, well, maybe your kids will be like me. Uh, so I went and got a vasectomy. Right? <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> she was like, you can't do that. You can't just run away from your problems. Uh, I'm like, actually, yes, I can. And I would have done it a lot faster without these ignore toenails slowing me down. <laughs> I recently became a U.S. citizen, guys. I recently became a U.S. citizen. Thank you. Appreciate it. It's very nice. Yeah, I became a U.S. citizen at the peak of the pandemic, right? They started, like, beating up on Asians in the streets, and I was like, ah, oh, finally. This feels like home. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I was worried for my parents a little bit, because, you know, they were like, beating up on all the Asian people, and it was all sorts of people, like white people, black people, brown people, and I didn't think that was fair, right? Because if anyone deserved to commit violence towards old Asian people, it's young Asian people. <laughs> like the people they beat get to go first. You know, that's, that's only fair. Uh, a lot of organizations at the time, they were like trying to combat a lot of the attacks by handing out whistles. Now, I think bring a whistle to a hate crime is uh, about as useful as bring a whistle to any other crime. <laughs> right? Like, if I was about to attack someone and I found out that they were armed with a whistle, <laughs> I am now twice as confident that I'm going to succeed. <laughs> right? Because, like, no one who has a whistle also has a gun. <laughs> so, a whistle is just a very loud way of announcing that you have no weapons. <laughs> Follow the sound to find me, you know? I, don't know? I wish they offered something more tangible, right? Like I myself, I'm a martial artist. I practice Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And uh, people start doing yeah, martial arts for different reasons, you know? I started doing Jiu-Jitsu because, you know, I just wanted someone to hold me. <laughs> My coach was like, uh, you know, at the end of the round, you need to let go. <laughs> I'm like, come on, coach. Five more minutes. I am barely hard. <laughs> oh. I've been trying to learn uh, Spanish recently, guys. I've been trying to learn Spanish, because you know, I want people to be confused when I speak. <laughs> Just like, what kind of minority are you? <laughs> North Mexican. That's, yeah. <laughs> West of Guadalajara, east of Beijing. That's, that's where I come. <laughs> well, someone knows their geography, okay. Yeah, I, uh, I was taking on Duolingo, right? And I thought I was doing pretty good. And then I went to Mexico and I found out that being good at Duolingo doesn't make you good at Spanish. It just makes you good at Duolingo. <laughs> right, like at first when they would ask me, ¿Hablas Español? I'd be like, sí. <laughs> Un poco. And then halfway throughout the trip, I had to change it to a, ooh, poquito. <laughs> Muy poquito. And then by the very end of the trip, I was just like, no. No hablo. American. Because I realized that what Mexicans think is a un poco amount of Spanish is a goddamn un poco, right? Like, I would say I speak a little bit of Spanish, and then they would go off on like a 10 sentence tirade, like, pipu in a reggaeton concert. And I'd be like, hey, Mr. Worldwide. 
I have no idea what you just said. When I say a little bit of Spanish, I mean I know uh, numbers, <laughs> colors, some fruits, you know? the chorus to Despacito, you know? <laughs> and, and I have the ability to ask questions and not understand the answers. That's where I'm at. Yeah, I don't know. My buddy came up to me and he was like, oh, how many days are you on Duolingo? And I was like, oh, 200 days. And he was like, oh, cool. What palabras have you learned? And I was like, what's a palabras? <laughs> he was like, words. <laughs> I'm like, uh. <laughs> they don't cover that in the first 200 days? We've been really focused on uh, uh, apples, what color they are, and how many has Juan eaten? <laughs> tres. Juan ate tres manzanas rojas. Those are the red apples, yes, thank you. I feel like the app Duolingo, it doesn't teach you enough conversational Spanish, also doesn't teach you any slang. Like the word that I learned for jacket in Spanish is chaqueta, right? Chaqueta. But uh, then you go to Mexico, you find out that slang for to jerk off. <laughs> I'm like, ah. Oh. So I've just been going all these coat checks. Asking for hand jobs? That's... Oh. This lady at the last show was like, so did you get any? I'm like, yeah, Juan only charged me 100 pesos. And his hands were very soft. <laughs> yeah. There's one person laughing, it's a great laugh, I love it. Just keeps going. Oh, man. See a lot, of, a lot of couples out tonight, that's nice. Any single people in the house? Make some noise if you're single. I don't believe that at all, but okay. That's, some of you staring right next to your spouse, like, yeah, that's... Uh. <laughs> you're like, I don't know where this night's gonna go, right? <laughs> um. I've been, uh, I've been reading up on the psychology of dating. It's very interesting. Apparently, we tend to like look for people with like similar traits to that of our parents. You guys know this? And I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. That explains why I keep chasing women that don't love me. <laughs> this is a comedy show, people. I'm gonna need you to turn that into a ha ha. That's, yeah. Because I think I tend to look for the opposite, you know? I tend to look for women that, that are kind, supportive, haven't fucked my dad. That's <laughs> basic requirements, you know? <laughs> this guy's like, yeah, yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> uh, dating is interesting. I remember I was on this date, and uh, it wasn't going very well. And I could tell, because, you know, she used those exact words. <laughs> Intuitive. And uh, at the very end of the date, right, she was like, oh, hey, I'm sorry for being so negative. It's my strong Gemini energy. Now, CC, I didn't know we could use make-believe to justify reality. <laughs> right, like, your star sign is not an excuse for your character flaws. I don't use fortune cookies to justify my... <laughs> Just like, oh, I'm sorry for being so salty all the time. Is my strong soy sauce energy. <laughs> oh. told me on a date that she just got a, a brand new tattoo of uh, serotonin. That's the, that's the happy molecule, right? Now, I, uh, I majored in chemical engineering and I minored in sadness. <laughs> so, 
I took a look, and I was like, oh, that's, that's not serotonin. That's mustard gas. That's not even a happy gas. <laughs> Look, I got nothing against tattoos, you know? I myself, I have a yin yang sign, because you know, I am 50% Asian and 50% basic. But I feel like getting a, you know, a, a molecule tattoo when you don't know chemistry is kind of getting like a Chinese tattoo when you don't speak Chinese, you know? Like you think it says like live, laugh, love, when really it says mustard gas. <laughs> Thank you, three claps. That's a standing ovation of my book. But uh, third day is going well, we'll go back to her place and she, she asked me, she's like, hey, so tell me, what do you like? What's your, uh, what's your favorite position? And before I could answer, she was like, you're a Capricorn, you're probably into like super vanilla stuff. And I was like, oh right, you're into astrology, you're probably super stupid. <laughs> I didn't say that, I just thought in my head. Smart enough to not cock block myself anymore, you know? Um, <laughs> but yeah, she was like, so tell me, what do you like? What's your favorite position? And I'm like, I don't know. Inside? <laughs> Thank you. My favorite position is inside, you know. Any configuration where I am inside will do. I am a simple man with simple needs. Just, this guy gets it. <laughs> But then she was like, okay, well, just so as you know, I like hair pulling, choking, and cock slapping. I was like, oh. You really are Gemini. <laughs> now, to clarify, to clarify, is cock slapping me? Slapping you with my cock, or you slapping my cock? This is, <laughs> this is an important question, right? Can we all agree that this is an important question? Okay, thank you, thank you. This dude, like, no, it's not. <laughs> By the way, someone's getting slapped tonight, right? <laughs> uh. <laughs> no, actually, she was like, uh, actually, uh, neither, neither is uh, me slapping you with uh, your cock. <laughs> I was like, huh. I don't think I have enough cock to make that work. It's not that I'm that well hung, it's just my face is so far away. Also, let's be real, if my cock reached my own mouth, I would not be here right now. Right? Thank you, thank you. Got a, a, a new girlfriend, guys. Just got a new girlfriend. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, I got a new emotional support human. That's what I got. She's uh, she's Tibetan, and I'm Chinese. So every time we have sex, the Dalai Lama sheds a tear. So, <laughs> it uh, it was her birthday recently, and I, I wanted to surprise her for her birthday. So I uh, I stopped pulling out. Surprise! No, okay. Just like Disneyland. Um, okay. No, I, uh, I recently learned that uh, we have different love languages. 
her and I, and we don't know about love languages. Yeah. yeah, it's like how your partner feels loved, right? Uh, hers, yeah, hers is, um, is uh, words of affirmation and acts of service. Yeah. yeah. And uh, how did you know? Are we dating the same woman? Yes. <laughs> You're like, that's me as well. I'm in an interracial threesome. Did you know that? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, hers is uh, words of affirmation and acts of service. And uh, mine is uh, physical touch and blowjobs. <laughs> and gifts. And gifts. If those gifts are blowjobs. And words. If those words are... <sighs> Quality time. No. Uh, <laughs> hers is, uh, is words of affirmation, right? So every time I say I love you, she'll be like, tell me why. Yeah, some of you are guilty of this. <laughs> and I'll be like, oh, baby, it's because you're so loving, you're so caring, you're so supportive. Uh, but then next time she'll be like, tell me why, but in different words. So now I'm out here reading all these tutorials brushing up on my synonyms, right? Just like, oh, baby, you're so munificent, genial, elemosinary. Feels like I'm prepping for the SATs again, you know? I think it's bullshit that, you know, I have to learn all these new words, but she can just give the same blowjob. No update in technique. <laughs> she doesn't have to read a book. <laughs> who loves who more really, you know? Oh, oh. <laughs> I've, been, uh, I've been trying to get into some inspirational quotes this year, guys. I've been trying to get inspired. I read this Japanese one recently. It's, uh, it goes, Nana korobi ya oki. And that translates to, uh, fall down seven times, get up eight. Fall down seven times, get a beat. It's very famous, right? Now the Japanese, they're very persistent people, and uh, you can tell by their proverbs and their war crimes. <laughs> what are you gonna deny it? Okay. I didn't know there were Japanese people in Putnam. Um, <laughs> but yeah, very persistent people, but they're not very good at math, unlike the Chinese, the original Asians. Because that saying should really be, if you think about it, it should really be, fall down seven times, get up seven times. <laughs> right? <laughs> like you fall once, you get up once, you fall twice, you get up twice, you can't get up more times than you fell. <laughs> That's like saying, fall asleep seven times, wake up eight. Like, unless you're taking shrooms, you can't wake up when you're already awake. <laughs> or it's like saying, jerk off seven times, come eight. <laughs> Go to Taco Bell seven times, get diary eight, you know. I suppose that last one is theoretically possible. I just think it's so funny that over all these centuries, they were like, oh, that's a great saying, that's a great saying. And not a single person was like, hey, should we maybe like check the math on this one, you know? fall down seven times, get a bait, but I get it, I get it. They were trying to be like inspirational, they're, they're, they're exaggerating for effect. But uh, I wanna share the Chinese one with you tonight. I think you're gonna like it a lot better. It makes a lot more sense. You ready? 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 Okay. Don't fall. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> oh. Do one more and I'll get out of here, guys. You guys have been fun. I, uh, I passed by this sex store, actually, on the way here, and uh, I went in for science. <laughs> and I saw there was a silicone mouth, and on the box it said, now featuring realistic teeth. <laughs> I was like, who the hell wants a sex toy? 
with realistic teeth. <laughs> like out of all the parts of a woman to make realistic, teeth would be the last one. <laughs> like my ideal woman has the face of an angel and the mouth of a meth addict. <laughs> I date a lot of girls from Worcester. That's... <laughs> Couple ooze, couple booze. Okay, cool. I, don't know. I just feel like they're making these things too realistic in like the wrong direction. You know, imagine if they made like a realistic pocket pussy. You know, so realistic that for five days of the month you can't use it. You gotta get an ice cream and a heating pad. You know. Periods. Okay. <laughs> no, it's weird. It's weird. Have you, have y'all noticed that like? Male sex toys are just like female parts, but female sex toys are like super upgraded versions of male parts. <laughs> right? Like y'all get these mystical fantasy dragon cocks. <laughs> these these five in one Swiss Army dildos. That's, that's not fair. Cause guys, we just we just want you the way you are, you know? but in plastic. Yes. <laughs> but women, you're like, no, no, we're gonna need that turbocharged with Bluetooth and a tsunami setting. <laughs> I feel like it kind of like mirrors dating preferences, right? Because women, you're always looking for a guy with like features and, and upgrades and guys are just like, uh, yeah, this one has teeth. <laughs> I don't know. You guys should get equally realistic sex toys, you know. Deal those that go limp every now and then. <laughs> Vibrators that run out of juice just before you finish, you know. That's, that's a good time to mention. I'm available for kids' parties. That's, all right, you guys have been wonderful. My name's Peter Lou, everybody. Peter Lou. Peter